Hello, this is Rory to Love Chat, and today's topic is narcissism. Now, this is video number 235. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy these videos, I would be so very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Now, this is a topic we've been wanting to cover for a while. Um, admittedly, it's a big topic, and there's a lot that goes into it, and I will probably miss a couple of things, and I apologize for that, but... You know, when it comes to something regarding the mind and the spectrum that is the mind, because as we know, narcissism is on a spectrum, you can be a little narcissistic, you can be completely narcissistic, and that throw in a lot of nuance, and sometimes things that look like narcissism aren't necessarily narcissism, so I'm going to do my best. I hope you all enjoy this video, and at the end of the video, we're going to talk about some new directions the channel's going to be taking. Um, certainly, you're still going to have the dating videos, you're still going to have the Get Your Ex Back videos, the mental health in general videos, but we're going to be adding a couple of things, and uh, an exciting new announcement, and maybe I'll even toss in a contest at the end. So, make sure to listen to the whole video. Um, so, let's jump right in. What is narcissism? So, the narcissistic personality is a disorder of the mind. It's a behavioral disorder, which basically the person in question has a very inflated sense of self and self-importance. And and it's definitely more common in men, although women can have it as well. And there are many symptoms, and we're going to cover a lot of them here. Ultimately, this should only be diagnosed by a mental health professional and not by you. Because a lot of people are going to come here and think, oh, hey, keyword, narcissism. I think my ex was a narcissist because they broke up with me. That doesn't make your ex a narcissist. Your ex cheating on you doesn't make your ex a narcissist. Your ex being mean to you from time to time doesn't make your ex a narcissist. This is a serious mental health disorder. And so we're going to do our best to try and cover all the bases. So let's just jump right in and we'll have a conversation as we go. And hopefully this video shines some light and educates people on exactly what it is. So the first sign to look for, and these are in no particular order, is a grandiose sense of self-importance. Narcissists, true narcissists, are in love with themselves. They think extremely highly of themselves, and usually what this is doing is actually protecting themselves, because it's much like extreme avoidance mixed in with extreme selfishness. So they can't let anybody underneath that veil of self-importance, and so they think that Important people want to hang out with them, like celebrities. They think of themselves as a celebrity. They think that they can do no wrong. And somehow, the conversation always seems to turn back to them and how great they are. And basically, they love to talk about themselves, their accomplishments, their achievements, at a scale that is much greater than perhaps what you and I would look at it like. So, for example, if I sign up for bowling, and I bowl a pretty good game, a pretty high score, well, somehow the narcissist will make themselves better. It's constant one-upsmanship. Yeah, you bowled an okay score, but here's actually how you need to bowl. Take it from me. I'm a bowling master. I'm the best bowler in the world, in fact. And you know the thing about bowling, they've got some great people in bowling. Some of the best people. they got really smart and great people, in fact. Does that sound familiar? Next, they have a preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, love. Basically, everything's coming up roses all the time. And when things aren't going well, it's everybody else's fault except their own. Number three for the science to look for is a belief that they're special and unique and can only be understood by other people that they deem to be as worthy as they are. Number four, they have a need for excessive admiration and cannot tolerate people who do not think highly of them. Number five, to go along with number four, is a sense of entitlement. They believe that they're entitled to everything and that if you believe that they're not, then you're a problem. Number six, a complete lack of empathy. They cannot relate to how you're feeling, and in fact, how you feel doesn't even really matter because they must have somewhere in their repertoire a problem that is somehow worse and thus is more deserving of the conversation's attention. Next on the list is an envy of others or a belief that others are envious of them. And finally, we come to what I believe now is number eight, a demonstration of arrogance and haughty behaviors or attitudes. So 
do you see kind of what I meant earlier in the beginning of the video where a lot of these behaviors are relevant in most people? And yet, most people have a degree of narcissism, and many of you might be kind of surprised to hear that. But we need a bit of that narcissistic behavior. We need a little bit of that thick skin. Otherwise, we won't be able to tolerate the gentlest of slights. So what do I mean by that? Well, imagine you don't have a narcissistic bone in your body. And very different than having narcissistic personality disorder, we're talking about much smaller far lower on the spectrum, narcissistic traits, and maybe just one or two, and somebody cuts you off on the highway, you will completely break down in tears. You won't be able to handle that. We need some of that thick skin, and if we don't have it, things get much more challenging, and we have much less boundaries, and we're far too agreeable, and people walk all over us. But again, don't get too confused with what I just said compared to narcissistic personality disorder, which is what we're talking about here. So what are some signs to look for narcissism in relationships? And we're going to tackle some of the big ones on this list. So starting off with the first one, which is they're charming at first, also known as love bombing. They make you feel like you are the greatest thing on earth. They make you feel like you're the top of the world, and then they pull away once they know that they have you. Number two, they feed off all of the compliments you give them, almost like it's food. And yet, it never seems to be enough. Number three, they don't have many friends. And for some reason, they have trouble keeping pretty much anybody in their life. Number four, they pick on you constantly. They put others down to build themselves up. A narcissist is often the bully at your high school. Although, to be clear, that is a demonstration of a narcissistic behavior. That does not necessarily mean they have narcissistic personality disorder, and I'm going to keep repeating that in this video because there is a very real difference with being identifiably narcissistic and having the personality disorder and just having one or two traits of narcissism, which most people on earth have. Number five is that they think they're right about everything, even when they are identifiably wrong and even when there's evidence. And we're talking like really identifiable things that everybody agrees upon, like climate change. And they'll never apologize for stances that they take because they truly believe that they are correct and that they have nothing to apologize for, which makes it, to a degree, far scarier. Number six, they freak out when you gain autonomy or try to break up with them because you cannot leave a narcissist. Number seven, and this is probably the biggest one on the list, they gaslight you. So, just to cover what gaslighting is, because I think a lot of people aren't entirely sure, even though they've heard the word. So, gaslighting is when your partner uh, gets you to believe that you are the problem. You feel like everything you do is wrong. You always think it's your fault when things go wrong. You're often apologizing for things that aren't your fault. You have a sense that something's wrong, but you aren't able to identify what it is in the relationship you often question whether your response to your partner is appropriate, and you make excuses for your partner's behavior to everyone else. Basically, gaslighting is when your partner successfully gets you to call your own sanity into question. Things like, wait, am I the problem? Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the issue. If you find yourself thinking these things in a relationship, well then, congratulations, you've successfully been gaslighted. And I want you to take a step back and talk to those in your circle, the people that love you, because they're going to set you straight. They're going to go, yep, this one is on you, or nope, this one has nothing to do with you. Rely on your team, your group of people. Those are the people that are going to remind you of who you are when you're not sure. So all in all, this has been a brief overview of what narcissism is. Now, frankly, folks, it's such a huge topic. There's no way for me to cover everything about it. I will make some additional videos in the future regarding narcissism, but... What do you do? How do you handle a narcissist? My first piece of information is you try as hard as you can not to have to handle a narcissist. You identify when there's one, you back away if you can. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they're family members. Sometimes they're romantic partners. The best thing you can do is constantly remind yourself that you deserve better. Build a support network with friends and family who can help remind you what reality is. Urge your partner, if it's romantic, to go to therapy or even if it's just a friend. Get a therapist yourself. 
and strengthen your relationships with your empathetic friends because these are the people who will help keep you sane and level. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And I did mention that a couple of new things were going to be happening with the Love Chat, so I'll take a minute to explain what they are. So, we've recently rented a location. We're going to be setting up all the microphones and cameras for the podcast. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the cameras yet. We'll see. Um, but the microphones will be happening, and we'll be covering many different topics. Not all of them will be about relationships. Some of them will branch into fitness, how to lose weight and gain muscle, because so many of you are going through that after a breakup. And so it was suggested to me many, many, many times, and I think we'll finally go through with it, which are breakup videos specifically geared towards how to lose weight more and gain muscle more and gain more mental health and have different counselors on and psychologists and psychotherapists and doctors and personal trainers and all of that. So I think it's interesting, and frankly put, it gives me a lot more content to talk about. Now, don't worry, the content that you guys know and love will still be released. We'll still talk about getting your ex back videos. We'll still talk about reconciliation and dating and all the stuff you guys initially came here for. Because, frankly, that's what the channel was originally created for. But I don't want to be put into a position on this channel where I am creating content just because you guys expect content, right? I still want it to be high-quality content for you, and so I'm going to try to deliver that in multiple different ways. And expanding the channel is the logical next step. For those that asked, the audiobook is currently being recorded and should be out fairly shortly. And I did mention a contest, but I think for organization's sake, I'm going to talk about that context in the next video, which I'll try to have out for you guys tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you all next time.